now that we've got that behind us, we can let that go. Uh, all right. So the big news of the week is that we have started moving our viewer repositories to Git from Mercurial. As you all know, uh, by now Bitbucket is dropping support for Mercurial early next year um, in stages, and so we don't really have any choice. Um, it'll be um, it'll be an interesting exercise, and I think in the end will work out very well. Uh, I posted a doc, and I'll put the link here, which is really oriented directly towards third-party viewer uh, conversions to stay in sync with us. Um, and I hope that it works for people. Um, this is not the only way to do it. Uh, that is, this is the only recommended way to do the conversion. The stuff that's in there about how to manage branches and what our expectations are about what you'll do with respect to branches versus separate repositories are just a reflection of what we plan to do. Uh, and you have <laughs> the marvelous thing about Git is there's many ways to do almost everything. And uh, you are, of course, free to use whichever ones you are comfortable with. The important thing is that the Bitbucket Linden Lab slash viewer repository is where we will be pushing things when they are promoted to the default viewer. Um, so there will, for the time being at least, uh, we've decided that for a little extra safety, we're going to be, we have a fork of that called viewer dash dev. Um, and that's where all the branches that for in progress development will be, or at least all the public ones. Uh, and, um, so you are, of course, welcome to keep an eye on that one, um, and or pull from it for your experimental stuff, anticipating, uh, you know, anticipatory merges and that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, be aware that those are, of course, works in progress. So hopefully this will all go reasonably smoothly. We'll see. Um, the other important announcement that I have for you is that, um, and I've said this to some people individually in response to queries, um, our no change window, that is the period during which we try not to touch the grid other than to fix broken things, um, will be December 20th through January 1st. Um, the hope being that most Lindens will be able to enjoy their holidays and not get paged because something is broken. We would appreciate it if third-party viewers also did not release new versions during that time, just on the off chance that they cause additional support load or operations problems. Uh, we know that that is relatively rare. And we appreciate that it's relatively rare. Um, but uh, if we can let everybody have a nice, quiet holiday with their families or whatever it is they do over the over the end of year break, that would be great. Uh, yeah, go for go for the open sim releases. That's fine. We we won't be troubled by those. Uh, okay. Um, so that's that's that news. Uh, and Veer, you want to give us the summary of where we are with have our latest release and what's in the pipeline? Yeah. So uh, we did just have an update this week. A uh, new Mate viewer was promoted. That was Mate Wassail. So should be seeing some uh, you know mostly bug fix stuff turning up there. Um, that's going to cause the usual round of, uh, you know, merges and updates for the other in-progress viewers. Um, so, you know, notable in-progress viewers, we've got uh, EEP is still in 
graphics bug fixing mode. Uh, we are seeing some good progress on that, but it's uh, all going to be done imminently. Um, the viewer profiles project is uh, the thing where we're moving profiles back into the viewer from the web, and that is in uh, apparently pretty good shape. We're uh, we're going to be putting that out as an RFC soon. Um, so we are hoping that will be in a uh, you know promotable state soon, but uh, it's currently being tested. Um, let's see other things going on. We we still have um, some some work going on with the uh, build tools copy paste. That's that's going to need some some UI work though. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, also, there's been some uh, work in the um, Hopper for a while now about improving the mesh uploader UI. Um, so uh, also also needs a bit more baking on that one. Uh, I think those are the main ones. As usual, we have uh, various uh, maintenance releases in the pipeline. So as as uh, Wassail gets released, we'll have uh, we'll have a new main going to RC and so. Forth. I think that probably covers all the ones of public interest. Uh, did I forget anybody? We've got uh, Muscadine for Animesh customization, but that one's more or less on hold right now. Um, mostly I've been working on it. I've been off on other stuff recently. Uh, I think that's it. So that's the news. Um, the floor is open. Uh, Nat is uh, mowing down threading bugs um, and hopefully hopefully he will have new toys for us after the new year. Uh, yeah, we're targeting 2017. Yeah, we're, we're, we may start on 2019 at some point next year, but we wouldn't want to be completely caught up. That would be out of character. We have some updates in the queue for the uh, Chrome Embedded Framework as well. Uh, those depend on 2017, so we can't push them out until uh, 2017 goes out. But uh, at, you know, after that happens, um, I, I think we should see some improvements in what features work within uh, within the the SL in World Viewer then. It will it will make video playback better. Whether people will consider it working again remains to be seen. It will support MP4. Yeah, 
But MP4, like other things, is is a container, um, and it is it is not possible to reliably say that. Everything that has a particular suffix on the end of its name is going to work um, for any given suffix. Uh, so we'll have to see. But we will be adding a bunch of video codecs that we didn't have before. And it, so it will support more than it did before. But as Veer said, that that relies on the tool chain change, so it's stuck in line behind the 2017 project. We have been also keeping up with Xcode in that same branch. So despite the fact that Apple seems to be releasing a new Xcode every three weeks lately, uh, we, we didn't... Uh, we we have not yet fallen behind on that one. Well, that's, that's very good news. You will discover a problem that I've been spending some time on, which is that um, the, the currently released viewer code, when you log the most severe level of error, log an, an error error, uh, it deliberately crashes the viewer so that we find out which unexpected terrible thing happened. Um, wait, uh, what? That's that's what the that's what LL error does. It that's normal. Right. Right? Um the current code does that by calling a subroutine to crash the viewer. This has the unfortunate effect in bug splat that all deliberate crashes end up in the same call stack. <laughs> You end oh, up lovely! Many different ways to get to the same crash. Um, I have been working on a fix for that, and um, hopefully, I will get Nat's help figuring out how I've busted it. I've it, it works on Windows; it doesn't work on the Mac right now. The bug splat mechanisms are different, um, so uh, 
So the deliberate crashes are, are not as well supported um, in bug splat at the moment um, as they as we would like them to be. I, I have got the basic mechanism fixed so that they come out as different stacks, but um, back uploads don't work. So um, I suggest that you live with that unless somebody gets really ambitious and wants to help me figure out why it's not working. I might poke Nikki about that. Yeah. We managed to import um, some of our old logs, but um, we don't really get to use it until we get a viewer release out. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's it's annoying. Um, you can actually use there are tricks you can do in the bug splat user interface on the website to split them up. Um, but uh, I'd have to ask Nikki. Or really, might know. I mean, Griefer. Uh, it's, Firestorm will be allowed to be able to search crash reports by username. That's a restriction that we've set, Worlds. I don't think. Oh. Have put on us. And yeah, I wasn't aware did of that. It. I think ages ago because of uh, legacy. Um, you know, it's the same reason we we don't collect anything from our users. Right. Because oh my god, data mining. It would be useful if we could, I don't know, it's a can of worms. And there's also that, yeah. The, the you can, you can set the expiration time on the data in bug splat. And if you set it short enough, then you don't have a GDPR problem because it's ephemeral data. Oh, that's interesting. Consult your lawyers about what that number should be. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I'll get right on I'm that. I'm afraid that sharing lawyers' opinions is not actually a kosher yeah, thing to do, so I can't yeah. share ours. No, we've got a you know multi-million dollar budget, so it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> As one of the attorneys for one of my previous companies once said the, in response to a similar kind of question, the real answer is pay me a million dollars, wait three years for a court to rule, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> That's good, actually. I should write that down. <laughs>
Nothing else today. It's awfully easy. Even with me here, imagine. It's actually because I have other work to do. You guys are so lucky I have. Uh, Oz, when is Eep coming? Uh, you are not the only person that's been asking me that, and I don't have any better answer for you than I do for anybody else. We are making. What's, what's the next the, big? The last. The last the report drive. from the, the last report from the rendering devs was that they're fixing them faster than new ones seem to be coming in. Which, if that stays true, will be in good shape. And so, what is your next major drop? Guess. Uh, do we have a guess for that, Veer? Five seconds. Go. Uh, sorry, give me the question again. Or you're trying to guess how long it's going to take to fix the remaining issues? No, just your next big drop of something. Uh, I mean, basically, we're going to continue updating EEP as new merges come in, which means you're going to continue to see, uh, you know, a trickle of issues getting fixed. It basically everything is, um, just finding graphics issues and knocking them down one by one. You know, there's not any kind of big picture thing where we're going to add some, you know, new spiffy feature or whatever. It's, it's just, uh, well, this case where, you know, Fulbright didn't look right and fog is now better, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's basically the way development's going to go for the for EEP is you're just going to see a, uh, you know, flow of, um, you know, these kinds of bugs getting knocked down, uh, you know, probably several with each uh, each update. So not before the new year? Mm, well, um, I, I'm not sure when the next... Merge is going to go out. Um, you know, we since we just had the promotion, that's getting merged like probably as we speak. Um, that's probably the last promotion for get, this year. Yeah, I could conceivably get pushed out um, next week. So, what's the uh, no change window this month? Before the no change window, or no release window, twentieth through the first. It's right. the thirteenth right now. So, yeah, so we've probably uh, done our last promotion for the year. Now, this doesn't directly affect Second Life, but uh, Beck is working on um, getting something out to open Sim. Um, uh -huh. And the way that it sort of indirectly may affect SL is that it can still be used uh, in SL. Um, I certainly we wouldn't be promoting it as a Second Life release. In fact, we'll be dealing with trying to differentiate for all of our users, that this is for OpenSim, not for Second Life. Uh, but there may be some adoption into Second Life. Uh, so that's more or less just like heads up. So I don't expect that we'll be pushing a new default viewer until after New Year's. Okay, um, that's good. There are um, there are a couple of viewer thing or Second Life things that will be happening in the first part of next year that will probably require some viewer updates. So those will end up being the high priority. Um, I don't think there'll be any major stuff, but there will be minor stuff. Um, Premium Plus and name changes. Both will probably have, will, will certainly have some implications for viewers.
Well, I think we'll be looking for getting something released January, February for Firestorm. Just to sort of try to keep uh, releases close to like every three or ten months or so. Yeah, great. Yeah, the um, one thing that uh, viewers will may want to do is support migrating people's settings and chat history when they change their name. Oh Since boy, that's all stored in a in a directory that's based on the avatar's name. Is is that is that sort of you saying that you don't have that, and you were hoping that a third party might no have we'll, that? We'll we'll be doing something okay. for that. Okay. I'm I'm I don't know what off the top of my head right now. That sounds like a nightmare. Yes, they still have the same UUID after the change. UUID does not change. Period. Yeah, we could just switch to using the UUID, I guess. Uh, it's not exactly user-friendly, though. No, it's not very readable. Or add links or something. Uh, more recent versions of Windows have these things called junctions, um, but I'm not sure if that works going all the way back to, um, you know, our, our earliest supported platform. Uh, oh, and speaking of Windows versions, um, those who are Keeping track of such things, we'll know that Microsoft is no longer going to be issuing security patches for Windows 7 after January, I think it's the 14th. This next January the 14th, the one that's only a month away. Um, it is uh, very likely that we will, at that point, stop officially supporting Windows 7. Do you have any metrics by chance of how many users are still on Windows 7? Uh, it happens I do. And I suspect it's higher than It's 15%. higher than anybody would like it to be. No, it's actually not quite that high, but it's okay. like 12, 12 And that's, that's across all pretty, viewers. That's pretty high. Yeah. And of course, that's also based on what the viewers are reporting, and some don't report. So I, I it's not a number that has a lot, a real high confidence. It could be, it could be somewhat higher than that. Well, even ten percent multiplied by the user base is a lot of users. Yes, that's based on uh, a thirty-day sample taken, um, like earlier this week. Um, so, um, well, I've been urging Windows 7 users to upgrade for years now. doesn't seem to work, so I won't waste my time. But uh, I expect that our official position on that will be that if a bug is reported against Windows 7, we will not attempt to fix it. Because we aren't going to be doing any testing on Windows 7 at all. We will stop testing Windows 7 when we do viewer testing because it's no longer going to be safe to do that. So um, if you're on Windows 7 and you encounter a problem and it can't be reproduced on 
current versions, supported versions, then we will not attempt to fix it. So, um, yeah, well, um, and this is not us. This is Microsoft. We're not doing anything. I'm sure that um, instances of issues between Windows 7 and Windows 8 or Windows 10 or whatever must be very, surely there's got to be very few examples where uh, the issue can't be reproduced on Windows 7. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I think the question of whether we'll accept patches is, is an open one. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, we, we don't want to, we don't want to test it because we don't want to suggest that anybody should be using it. And we don't want to test it on Windows 7 because we don't want to run Windows 7 <laughs> internally. Right. Right. It would be a violation of our corporate security policies to run Windows 7 even for the purposes of testing viewers. So we won't do it. Um, 227179 will, at some point, hopefully very soon, get some love. Uh, let me look what the internal status of that is. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't have an update on that, but we're aware of it. We're, we'll try to get that done. So people should try to get off of Windows 7. People should try to get off of 32-bit. It will make your life better. And for the record, we have crashes that only work on 64-bit. Actually, that do I have that backwards? I probably have that backwards. What was that crash that ANSA couldn't reproduce on Windows 32? Yeah. Yeah, I probably don't. Um, do you happen to have, since you have metrics in front of you, do you have to happen to have metrics on 32-bit users versus 64? Just out of curiosity. Um, I, I don't. That's a, that's a little harder to get. Um, it's... It has been shrinking. Um, I can I can do it for our viewer, which is not as much help, but well, it gives an idea. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I can't. That chart is broken. Ah. Uh. So hard to get good help around here. I put in a jeer about that just the other day. 
Yeah, we may as well it. ask for stats. We, we do it to each other, too. Um, if, if it's okay with you, I'd like to wait until after New Year's to do stats. I might have better data by then. Oh. Some back-end changing? Uh, just updates. Nothing. And, and that particular bug fix, I hope. But better stats. Like really well, better stats or just slightly better stats? Just slightly better stats. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I'll I'll do them when I get back. Um, anything about the Git migration that's producing anxiety? A lot of anxiety. <laughs> So far, we haven't run into any big gotchas. It seems like uh, the, the underlying model for Git and Mercurial are pretty similar, but uh, I'm sure there's still going to be some fun to be had. There are any number of uh, cheat sheets on the web for Mercurial users migrating to Git or the other way around but um, that, that are helpful. There are a couple of verbs that... Um, have unfortunately have the opposite meanings. Yeah. So nothing that will do any great harm, but they will cause typos. Personally, I'm still adjusting to the fact that my brain thinks get checkout and my fingers type HG checkout. And that's... Uh, it'll be easier, Willie. You won't have to stalk as many different repos because we'll be using branches. Git branches work better than mercurial branches. So we'll be using them. And they're better supported by our build system. So, so most... Most of our work will be in that one viewer dev repository, each in its own branch. And you'll you'll see branches with names like DRT VWR dash, you know, some number. I bet you can guess that those are Jira IDs. Um, but we'll be using them as branch names as well. Yes, that's well. That's the that's the one where the release code will be the same name with dash dev appended. Will be the one where all the branches are going to be. There's a there's a, a fork of the one you just posted with dash dev appended to its name. That will have more branches in it. So if you if you just want to watch what we're what we've actually shipped as the default viewer, you only need the first one. If you want to see what's coming in the future, you want to be watching dash dev. Uh, and I think it was in Serial or somebody from the Firestorm team who pointed out to me that we can't that Git one of the things Git doesn't have is a is an integer 
uh, revision number. Yeah, how are you handling that? Well, we never used the revision numbers, so it's not a problem. Um, our our build numbers are generated by a component of our build system. Um, the um, the way I've handled it at other jobs is to count the number of revisions in the repository because that's always an increasing number, so it's going to be unique. Um, and there's a very short git command that gives you that. It doesn't produce numbers that increment just by one each time or anything like that, unless you're being very parsimonious with your commits, but at least it always increases. Oh, um, I have somebody arriving at my house that I have to go out and talk to. So if you folks wouldn't mind, I'm going to drop out. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, well, it looks like you do get consistent results if you kind of reconvert the same stuff, um, probably because everything is based on, you know, SHA-1 hashes under the hood.